Chlamydia trachomatis. Chlamydia trachomatis is an obligate intracellular parasite which cannot make its own ATP. The cell wall lacks muramic acid. Morphological and functional forms are seen in the form of elementary body and reticulate body. Elementary body is the infectious form. I just remember it like infectious with elementary body and it is metabolically inert. That's why it can survive extracellularly. EB can cause endocytosis by susceptible host cell that is actin microtubular network activation. It survives by inhibiting fusion of endocytic vacuole with lysosomes. Just compare it to Coxiella which survives inside an acidified phagolysosome and Listeria which uses Listeriolysin O to lyse the vacuolar membrane and escape into the cytoplasm. Internalization triggers conversion to reticulate body or RB form which is metabolically active and it is not infectious. Membrane bound compartment is converted to the cytoplasmic inclusion body. Reticulate bodies replicate by fission. Numerous RBs turn into EBs that is reticulate bodies turning into elementary bodies. Cell ruptures then the elementary bodies infect other cells. It can be asymptomatic usually. If it causes certain symptoms, those symptoms would be in the form of urethritis or vaginitis, pelvic inflammatory disease, conjunctivitis, Reiter's syndrome which is a triad of conjunctivitis, urethritis, arthritis as well. There are around 15 serotypes which determines the disease caused by this. The serotypes are A to C that causes trachoma, a chronic conjunctivitis endemic in Africa and can result in blindness. D till K causes genital infections. Whatever we mentioned till now, urethritis, etc. and all the other inflammations are caused by D to K. And then L1, L2, L3 causes lymphogranuloma venerum. Transmission from mother to the baby at childbirth can happen and that leads to neonatal pneumonia and neonatal conjunctivitis. The treatment for this is usually doxycycline, azithromycin or erythromycin.